Hi guys, Al Lake Pierce Scuba, Vintage Scuba. This is our eighth series. We're starting with our eighth series. I can't believe it, but we've had an awful lot of fun, and I sure appreciate the comments. Boy, I, in fact, this morning I spent probably an hour, over an hour, answering your comments. And uh, I have something really interesting today. Oh, I want to show you this, first of all. Our new, our, our new special uh, t-shirts, yes, our new shirts, golf shirts, Alec Pierce. Uh, and what's that say down there? Zoom in on that, Kevin. Zoom in on that. <laughs> the talent. That's me, supposedly. I think it's pretty cute. Oh, I should show you the back as well, because the back shows all our playlists. It's Alec Pierce Scuba, but we have three different playlists. I think you regular viewers know, for, know that we have that. We have Tech Tips for Modern Divers, Vintage Scuba for you old guys or young guys interested in the history of scuba, and Sea Hunt Remembered yeah, for the real divers. So I hope you're enjoying this. Keep the comments coming and the ideas as well. This is my Portisub. whoop de doo What's a Portisub? Well, the Portisub was probably the second most famous DPV, Diver Propulsion Vehicle, or underwater scooter, as I, I like to call them, uh, ever made. The, probably the most famous, the best known around the world was the Fairlawn. And it's only, it's only a week or two ago uh, uh, that we put, I had a, a vintage scuba uh, episode about the Fairlawn. So you check back and look for the Fairlawn. And, uh, but this probably, certainly before the Fairlawn, which came out in the 70s, this device that you're looking at right now, the Portisub, was the best known. Now, it was best known for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was one of the very first that actually worked really well. There were others, uh, but they didn't last very long. They leaked, uh, they ended up on the bottom of the ocean, the switches broke, they didn't pull. Uh, for a variety of reasons, they didn't stay in the market very long. This one that wasn't on the market for very long either, only about four, maybe five years tops. But in that short period of time, it made a big impact. It sure did. First of all, a bit of history. The Porter Sub was uh, made by a machine company in Torrance, California, McNeil and Hardesty. And it looked just like this. McNeil and Hardesty made this machine, first developed it, invented it, whatever you want to call it, made it, and sold it. They were a machine company, so they were into this kind of stuff. They could form the aluminum and weld and put the gaskets in, and it has a starter motor inside. I'm going to show you some shots of the inside quickly. Uh, Kevin will put some on there. And a prop propeller at the back, prop handles and a switch and a car battery. Yeah, a car battery. And, all, and they made it work. So you put this, you put the battery in and seal it up tightly and off you go. You shh, all over the place. Oh, it really worked. It worked really, really well. And uh, McNeil and Hardaster, that company, the originators, uh, they sold this, just like ye yellow, it was bright yellow. They sold it for a couple of years. And then, for whatever reason, uh, I suppose uh, money, <laughs> probably, uh, a big scuba company by the name of Voigt. Uh, you vintage divers know about Voigt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Voigt's the company that supplied the gear to Sea Hunt. So there's a lot of different connections in there. Um, and uh, so they sold uh, the Porta Sub to Voigt. And uh, Voigt um, uh, uh, sold it then for another couple of years. But that's about all. Only for another couple of years for some reason. You know, they weren't inexpensive, they were $200. Yeah, that was a lot of money in 1960. It was a lot of money. I mean, today a DPV will cost you $3,000, $3,500 for a decent one. Uh, back then, $200 was a lot of money. Remember, you could buy a tank for $70. You could buy a regulator for $39. <laughs> anyway, so Voigt sold it for a couple of years. They changed it a very little bit, uh, mainly cosmetic. They painted it in their colors, which were, uh, their colors were white and blue. And they put a Voigt logo on it and the word Porter Sub on it. And so they cleaned it up a little bit, I guess is the best way to describe it. And they sold it for a couple of years. And you can see those. You, you go on to uh, Google and just uh, punch in Voigt Porter Sub. There's a couple of examples out there. They're not, people say they're very rare. I, I know of about a dozen. And uh, half of those are in perfect working conditions. I don't really call them rare. Certainly they're not, they're not common. If you want one, you're going to pay pretty good dollars for it. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, it's, it's a pretty neat machine. It was made popular on Sea Hunt, yes. Uh, McNeil and Hardesty supplied it to the producers of the Sea Hunt television series. And since that series was so tremendously popular all over the world, Mike Nelson 
Uh, he, he, he rode or drove. What do you do? You ride or drive? I guess you drive it. He drove one of these in several episodes of Sea Hunt. I'm going to do a Sea Hunt playlist episode on the Porter Sub. Talk some more about it and show some of the footage of Mike Nelson yeah, using one of these. Oh, he made it very popular too. And then the dive stores throughout uh, California for sure and the rest of North America. And I guess around the world they sold the Porter Sub. So it's pretty neat. One of the very first running ones. Now, interestingly enough, this particular DPV, this particular underwater scooter, is very similar to one that you could make yourself. That's right. If you watch my vintage Scooby, you know that in the 60s there was a lot of DIY, do it yourself. Uh, do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you had a little bit of a, a little bit of talent, a little bit of skills, some tools, you knew how to machine things without killing yourself, maybe a bit of welding and, and woodworking and so on, you could build a lot of scuba stuff. Oh gosh, yeah, camera cases were very, very common. Underwater communicators, dive lights, regulators. Yeah, yeah we used to make our own regulators. You go back to my vintage series, you'll see some. So anyway, this is my Porter sub, and uh, it, this is a condition in which uh, I found it. And uh, I, I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to leave it like this. There are a lot around that have been, have been updated and uh, restored, so they look just like a, a Voight version, the Voight uh, Porter subversion, the later version. And um, so I may or may not change it. This is the way it looked when it was used on Sea Hunt. And as you probably know, you guys out there, my passion is Sea Hunt, so I just may leave it just like this. I'm going to um, take just a second. I'm going to take the front cover off. It just bolts on with a couple of bolts. The, the, the front portion, the dome, of the Porter Sub is held on by four nuts and bolts, very simple, an O-ring seal in it, and so you take those nuts and bolts off and the dome comes up. And you can see that this is aluminum. Now, aluminum was quite uh, quite an expensive metal. It wasn't very common back in the 50s and 60s. The war was just over and aluminum was uh, ex rare and uh, pretty expensive, but they used aluminum. Good idea, it didn't grow very much. So once the dome came off, <clears throat> then the rest was pretty simple. If you, I'm gonna turn this so you can take a look inside. And you can take a peek down in there. You maybe not see too much, but you get some idea. It's just pretty simple. There's a tray in which the car battery sat right there, and, and the wires attached to the battery. And then way back on the inside, I'm not sure you can see in there at all, Kevin, but way back in there, there's a there's a, a motor, electric motor. There's a large gear. Can you see that gear down in there? I have another picture of it anyway, Kevin. And so the electric motor, which spun probably at about 1700 RPM, way too fast for a propeller, was geared down. So the propeller only turned at about uh, 60 or 70 revolutions per minute. And it's uh, just about that simple. A little switch, a little, it wasn't waterproof, just a wet switch on the handle. You squeeze the wet switch and boom, off you went. She said, easy. Now to handle the current draw, for you technical guys, to handle the current draw of the electric motor, there is, you can see it up here, there is, they use a solenoid. And it's an automotive solenoid. It's the same, uh, same solenoid that's in your car. Even today, they still use solenoids kind of like that. And uh, uh, so you press the switch, and the switch closes the solenoid, and the solenoid has big contacts, so the current drop for the motor didn't destroy the switch. It was just about that simple. Really, really simple machine. And of course, the propeller shaft comes through the uh, housing, and it has, a, has a, what they call packing in there, uh, a waterproof packing, so the water can't go through there, and the propeller spins, boom, off you go. It was great fun. One of my clubs many years ago in the uh, 70, mid 70s, 75, 76, Underwater World Scuba Club, uh, we built four DPVs. Yeah, that wasn't this version, it was a little different version. Little wings made of fiberglass, a little more modern version. We built four of them, and they are great fun. They're really a lot of fun. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. To start off our new episode, the Porta Sub. You may have heard about it. And if you uh, watch our Sea Hunt series, uh, not, not immediately, but in a short while, I will spend some more time talking about the Porta Sub because it was a well-known, very well-known feature in many of the Sea Hunt episodes. And I'll have some footage as well of the famous Mike Nelson with his Porta Sub. This is mine. He's got his own. <laughs> anyway, okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that. And we're on the start of our new uh, series of Vintage Cubo. So keep it up. Keep the comments coming, too. I love the comments. That's it. Talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce Scuba. Vintage Scuba. My Porta Sub. <laughs>